is, of course, uh, September 11th, the 17th anniversary of the deadly terror attacks that led to nearly 3,000 people uh, dying and also changed this nation forever. Lots of images and stories uh, from those days. Uh, and, of course, uh, African-Americans were also killed uh, and on that particular day, not only uh, in the tragedy on those airplanes and also in the World Trade Center, but also as first responders. Now, one story we want to tell you about is about Paula Edgar, who lost her mother, Joan uh, Donna Griffith, in the South Tower of the World Trade Center. Now, that event changed the course of her life, uh, and she joins us right now to talk about uh, this day as well as her mother. Paula Edgar, welcome to Roland Martin Unfiltered. Hi, Roland. How are you? Uh, it is uh, good to see you, uh, but even, uh, unfortunately, on this sad day, even though it's been 17 years, um, um, for you, um, what happens as you approach September 11th? Uh, because unlike losing a loved one and it's just losing that loved one, uh, in many ways, this is having to deal with this with not only 3,000 folks who killed and those families and other people who have been impacted. I mean, you're a part of really an international tragedy. Mm -hmm. The, the, it varies year by year. I, I will say that um, when it was it, when it was more recent, it was a lot harder to deal with the approach. But I instantly understanding the impact that has occurred um, in terms of how we approach the eight different. I'm hearing a little bit of. Uh, yeah, so we're having a slight issue with your Skype. So what I want uh, our folks to do is just to uh, just to tighten it up and then let me know mm -hmm. uh, if we're straight in terms of with the Skype. Uh, and so uh, if you all can let me know to make sure that her Skype uh, is fine, I'll continue our conversation. Uh, OK, so uh, so, uh, yes, so, yes, yes. so you can hear me now, Paula. I can hear you. Yes. Okay. I can also hear. Them. OK, gotcha. And so. Um, this is, of course, there were, there were events taking place in Pennsylvania, in New York City, in Washington, D.C. as well. Um, for you, going back to that day, um, what happened for you? What, what, what did you go through? Were you able to talk to your mother that day? What was the last time you actually communicated with her? So I was living in California when 9-11 happened. Uh, I was 3,000 miles away from home. But my mother and I every single day and that was in the day when you had to use you know 800 numbers to dial to get and everything else was um was long distance i had 800 numbers to her, to speak to her um every day and in fact the day prior to um 9 11 on september 10th that year um the very last thing she said to me was if you don't love him don't marry him and and wow at that point yes uh, at that point i was to um, someone who I did not know, and I was not so those were the final um, words of wisdom she was able to give and I took that 100% to heart um, in terms of that the next day she was gone um, your question if how we approach is um, it, it varies on the year right As I share number 11 with um, everyone Right. Our family shares this. And so because of that, I understand that it's not a legacy for my mother, but the legacy of being a victim of a historic event, of course, uh, um, American history. So um, when you say it changed your life, uh, this mm -hmm. is my last question. You know, how, how did it change uh, the direction of your life? Sure. Um, at the time my mother was ill, I really wasn't sure what I was going to do with my life. Um, after she said to me, if you don't him, don't marry him, immediately ended my, uh, my engagement. And after coming back to New York, I decided that I was going to become an attorney. The families that I worked with, or the attorneys that we worked with, the families three, were instrumental in us being better. They helped us build the victim's compensation fund and uh, my mother's will and estate. And from there, I decided that I wanted to be able to help people becoming an attorney. Well, Paula, we certainly uh, are sorry for your loss. Uh, it has been 17 years. Uh, no one ever gets over uh, losing a loved one, especially their mother or their father. And so we certainly uh, thank you for joining us to honor her memory. Thank you so much for having me today.
All right, thanks a bunch. I want to uh, introduce our panel now. Of course, we have uh, Tiffany Lofton, who is the head of the Youth and College Division of the NAACP. Also, Spencer Overton, uh, head of the Joint Center for Political and Economic Studies, and also uh, head of the Urban Conservative Project, uh, Liz Copeland, who joins us via Skype. Uh, and so glad to have all of you here. Um, just for both for Tiffany and Spencer, uh, th this is again one of those days that I don't care who you are, if you were alive at that time. Uh, you remember exactly uh, that day, the moments uh, you went through, especially if you lived in New York City or Washington, D.C. Right. And so I think that's so why it's so important to talk to Paula to put a human face on it. There's so many political things in terms of who we're going to get back and what's the strategy and that kind of thing. But there is a real human loss here in terms of Paula and her mother. And just having just empathy for that is incredibly important. I think, I remember, if I think about it right now, I was sitting in my AP history class in middle school, <laughs> and my teacher got the intercom announcement about what took place at the 9-11 in the Twin Towers in New York, and he turned on the jumbo. We didn't have flat screens back then. I'm acting like I'm older than both of y'all. But we had, we had the jumbo thick TVs, and they immediately turned the news on, and we watched the second plane go into the second tower. And being in middle school and being, in, I was in Los Angeles, California at the time, not recognizing how bad it was or what exactly was going on or happening, and then realizing or knowing that this is families that, that have lost their loved ones, this is uh, friends who have lost their loved ones, this is the partners who have lost their loved ones, and thinking about all the catastrophes that have happened since 9-11, because there have been a lot of them. Just like you said, Spencer, it's really important to make sure we paint a picture and tell the personal stories of folks who have been directly impacted and affected, because it's not just American history. People's lives are actually being impacted. Liz Copeland. Yeah, I, I recall the same thing, seeing the second plane going into um, the, the tower and thinking that it was a loop, that maybe they were replaying it and fully, you know, getting the, the gravity of the situation. Um, but I just want to talk about the aftermath. At that time, uh, as a country, we really came together, but the images that I can see um, were, of course, the first responders running into the, the building and, you know, police officers. Uh, but to have a woman of color to also be associated with this, this event, this tragic event in our in our nation's history is really important because it, to me, it, it symbolizes, especially at that point in time, how we were all Americans. And while I am certainly not saying that we want to feel how we felt during that time, but uh, afterwards, we believe that we should be concerned and take care of our neighbors. And we don't, I don't believe we have those same sentiments in 2018. I certainly am not arguing that we need to have a terrorist attack on our soils to prompt us to get back to that point, but I do remember that time.